Christina. So find something to put your legs up on and that's how we will begin. So whatever you have nearby and whatever you're using, I recommend scooching in, getting close to it, and putting your legs up on it. Put a pillow or a block or blanket underneath your head. Make yourself comfortable. Spread yourself out on the ground. Shrug your shoulders down away from your ear. Shake your head no. Wiggle your jaw. Work up a great big yawn. <sighs> and then find your breath in your belly. Take some long, slow, deep belly breaths. If you rest your hands on your tummy, you can feel your belly rise and fall with each breath. And slide your hands up to your rib cage. Let your belly remain neutral and passive as you focus your attention and breath now into your ribs. Then finally find your breath in your heart. Breathing into the upper portions of your chest. And then we'll put it together into a three-part breath. With your next inhale, balloon into your belly, into your ribs, into your heart. And then exhale, heart, ribs, and belly. Again, taking your time to take a full body three-part breath, inhaling belly, ribs, and heart, and exhaling heart, ribs, and belly. Notice that as you inhale, the breath tends to fill up the front surfaces of your body. And as you exhale, as you pour the breath out, the back surfaces of your body settle into the ground. So not only is this a three-part breath, but it's a circular three-part full body breath. Inhaling up the front and exhaling down the back. Continue. Deep, full body, three-part Circular breath. One more breath cycle. And at the end of your next exhalation, begin to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, wiggle your jaw, wiggle your nose, stretch your arms, stretch your legs, roll your wrists, roll your ankles, wiggle your jaw. Take a great big yawn. Now, if you do have your legs up a wall, 
you want to scoot yourself in close to the wall. If you're on a chair, we're going to pretend there's a wall nearby. Everybody's going to bring their knees in close to their chest and butt walk your hips in closer to the wall or chair or whatever you're using. So wiggle walk your hips in closer to whatever. And then coming to neutral, transfer both hands to your knees, bring your knees together. Keeping your legs narrow, close together, both hands go to your right knee. You're gonna take your left leg straight up the wall, if you're using a wall, or let your left leg rest on a chair, or a big ball, or whatever you're using. Hips are down on the ground. So if you've noticed that you've scooched in so close to the wall that your hips have lifted away from the floor, you gotta wiggle out a little bit. Ideally, your hips are down, solidly planted on the ground. The left knee is bent in towards your chest and your left leg is up on the wall, on the chair, on the ball, what have you. And ease that right thigh down in against your ribs. And once again, find your breath. Try to cultivate those deep belly breaths. Breathing against your thigh. This thigh settling in against your belly, against your ribs. As you breathe against your thigh, you are massaging your intestines, your internal organs. Helping to squish things along. It also gives you a subtle stretch on the right side of your lower back, helping to elongate the right side of your tailbone. So this is a variation on Ardha Apanasana, half wind relieving posture. Squishing your guts. And then with both hands on that right knee, you're gonna straighten your arm, moving the knee away from your chest. Both hands on that knee, you're gonna take that knee diagonal across your belly. So initially that right knee is pointed towards your right chest. Now you're gonna take that right knee, angle it over towards your left armpit. But ideally you're still keeping your hips down on the ground. So this gives you a little different angle, getting a slightly different area of that right outer hip, that right buttock to stretch. That right thigh comes diagonal across your belly, angling that right knee towards your left armpit. If it works for you. You can also cross your right foot to the outside of that left leg. And continue to breathe, breathing against that thigh, squishing your guts, breathing into it. So the advantage of doing legs up versions of these poses is that you put a lot more weight into your hips. You've got the entire weight of this right thigh, but also that left leg settling down into your pelvis, giving you more of a spread across that back waistband. And still working this right thigh, now you're gonna drag the right thigh from left armpit over towards the right armpit and out to the side. So holding onto that knee, I'm using my right hand and I'm sweeping that thigh like a windshield wiper across my belly over to the right. And then maybe sliding that right hand up the leg, depending on how long your legs are, how short your arms are, vice versa. You might be able to hold on to the pinky toe side of that right foot. It's gonna feel like a funky lunge. That knee is like almost a happy, half a happy baby out to the side. Again, pushing weight into a slightly different area of that right hip. And now there's a little less compression on your belly. So again, cultivate deep belly breaths. And you might find that with a deep belly breath, you actually pry that right thigh out to the side a little bit more. So if you haven't reached up and grabbed a hold of your foot, you can use a belt around that foot. 
you do want the weight of your arm to hang from that foot to drag that knee down towards the ground. So holding on with a belt or holding on with your hand, let that arm be heavy. And then keeping that foot flexed flat, you're gonna release the belt. Keep that right foot flexed flat, cross it over your left thigh. So again, if you have legs up the wall, that left leg is straight up the wall. That right ankle is crossed over the left thigh. It looks like a lowercase letter B. Or you might have your left leg draped over a chair or a sofa, big yoga ball, whatever. Right foot is flexed flat. You're gonna push your right ankle against your left thigh hard. Push the ankle against the thigh and activate that left leg as if you're trying to bring it off the wall. It's not gonna go anywhere, you're gonna leave it on the wall, but engage like you're trying to pull that left thigh towards your chest, but don't actually do that. Left thigh pulling in, it's not going anywhere as your right ankle presses away against that left thigh. And you'll notice that that right thigh pivots out to the side, turns out like a ballerina a little bit more. Stay here, if this is rocking your world, rock on, have fun. If you want more intensity, if that left leg is up the wall, you're gonna drag the heel down, bring everything in closer to your chest. If that left leg is on a chair, you're gonna drag that heel along the edge of the chair, the front edge of the chair, bringing everything in closer to your chest. All the while, continue to press your right ankle against your lap, press your right ankle against your left thigh. Let that right knee pivot out to the side. And do your best to keep breathing. I'm keeping my right foot flexed. And if you can see the inside of my ankle, it is smooth and wrinkle free. I'm not spraining my ankle to do a hip stretch. And then ease on out of that one. Both legs up the wall or in the air. And you can jiggle those legs out. And then we're gonna do the second verse, same as the first. So right leg will stay on the wall or the chair as you bring that left knee into your chest. Once again, Arda Apanasana, half wind relieving posture. Variation. So fingers interlaced around that left knee, that left shin, thigh melting down against your ribs. Once again, turn your attention in words and find that breath. Long, slow, deep belly breaths. Once again, that right leg is up the wall or the right leg is draped over the chair. Both hips are down heavy on the ground. Swallow, activating digestion, breathing against that thigh, massaging those organs of digestion, squishing your guts. If swallowing it was uncomfortable or difficult, you might consider putting a block blanket or folded pillow or folded blanket underneath your head so that swallowing and breathing is comfortable. It doesn't feel choky in your throat. All right, with both hands on that left knee, you're gonna ease that knee away from your chest and then bring it in at a diagonal angle. So now the left knee angles towards the right armpit. Your hips are still down on the ground. Thigh comes diagonal across your abdomen. And if it works for you, you might feel more comfortable letting that left foot come to the outside of the right thigh. Both shoulders are down, both hips are down. And both hands resting on that left knee letting that left thigh squish down against your abdomen. So again, squishing, squeezing, stimulating a slightly different area of your intestines and abdomen, and giving you a slightly different angle in that left hip lower back stretch.
Continue to let your arms be heavy. Let that thigh sink heavily against your belly. And then like a windshield wiper, you're going to smear, drag that thigh against your belly from right shoulder to left shoulder and then out to the side. So sweep that thigh across your belly like a windshield wiper and out to the side. And then you might be able to climb your hands up to hold on like half a happy baby, maybe holding on to the pinky toe side of that left foot or using your belt to lasso that lassie's foot. Get a good grip on that foot or belt so that that arm can add weight to the leg to intensify that stretch, that drag down towards the ground. The left foot is flex flat. Again, the right leg is draped out over your chair or that right leg is still straight up the wall. And you're breathing, deep belly breaths. Notice that those big belly breaths help pry that thigh open out to the side a little bit more. And now no longer with that thigh squishing against your belly, you can take those deep belly breaths to further massage, stimulate digestion. You're going to keep that left foot flexed flat and cross that left ankle over your right thigh, ankle bone on thigh bone. Left foot flexed flat. Push your left ankle bone against your right thigh bone. Shove your right thigh bone against the ankle bone. They're not going anywhere. So left ankle down, right thigh up. Again, they're not going anywhere. But that left knee pivots out to the side. It turns out like a ballerina. Big belly breaths. Stay here if you like, or if you want more intensity, you can drag that right heel along the edge of the chair, to the front edge of the chair. Or if the right leg was up the wall, you would drag that right leg down the wall to bring that right thigh closer to your chest. Whatever you choose to do. Keep that left ankle flex flat. Again, it's wrinkle free. Left knee continues to pivot out to the side. And then from here, release. I'm going to transfer over onto my big ball. If you're using a chair and that's all you have, that will work. If you're using a wall and that's all you have, that will work. But from what here, for whatever you're doing, whatever you choose to use, you're going to put the bottom of your feet together. If you're using a wall, your feet slide down the wall. Heels come in close to the groin. If you're using a chair, you put your feet on the edge of the chair seat. Bottoms of your feet together like they're praying, maybe even opening up like a book. If you're on a ball, you can rock a little bit from side to side. If you're not on a ball, you can use your hands and press one thigh and then press the other and kind of get your hips to shift, to rock, to pivot in place. By palpating your thighs, you can pivot your hips. Caution against pushing your knees away uh, towards the wall. If you're going to work your hands out towards your knees, push your knees wide out to the side. Deep belly breaths.
And then come to neutral, help your legs together. And once again, you can take legs straight up the wall or both legs over the chair of your seat or both legs on the great big yoga ball. You're gonna find your belt, wherever that is. It doesn't need to be buckled, it just needs to be long. The so bathrobe tie, scarf, yoga belt, whatever. Any of those things will work, or a yoga belt. Again, kind of wiggle walk. Make sure your hips are wedged in against the wall, wedged in against the ball. Your calves are nicely supported on the chair if you're using a chair. And then you're gonna bring the right knee into your chest, put the belt around the bottom of that foot, and raise the roof, press up through that right heel. Now I'm gonna loop the belt around the back of my hands a couple of times so that I don't aggravate my carpal tunnel. I can hold on without a death grip. I'm gonna hold on close to my foot so that my arms can be straight and the weight of my arms provides traction on that leg. Leg is super straight, hips down on the ground. So if you've wedged yourself in there tight up against the wall and your hips have started to float, you need to back off. Maybe wiggle your hips away from the wall enough so that they can stay down on the ground. If you're on the wall, your feet are probably apart seven, eight inches, not very far apart. If you're on the chair or a big ball, of course, you're, there's a little bit more of a split going on. And you are breathing. You can check in, shake your head no, wiggle your jaw. <sighs> Make sure that upper body is relaxed, released down to the ground. You've let out enough slack on that belt so that your shoulders are down on the floor. If you're holding it close enough to the foot so that your arms can be heavy and give you traction on that leg. And then let that right knee bend. Once again, wedging in close to the wall, making sure both legs are on your chair, wedging in against that ball if you're using the ball. Pause, take a breath. And then we'll do the other side. So bring that left knee in towards your chest, lasso that foot, raise the roof. Again, please keep your hips down. Shoulders are away from your ears. You can wiggle your jaw. Work up a good yawn. Oh, yawning should get easier and easier as the class progresses. When you practice relaxed inversions like this with your legs up over the, your heart, Blood drains out of your legs, it pools in your torso, plenty of blood getting up into your brain. Your heart doesn't have to beat as rapidly. You're getting plenty of oxygen to your brain. You don't have to breathe as rapidly. So your heart rate slows, your respiratory rate slows, your thought rate starts to slow. By manipulating our body position, you can manipulate your mental state. Long, slow, yawn like breaths. And then from here, let that left knee bend in towards your chest. And then if you're on a wall, both legs go up a wall. If you're not on a wall, you're gonna follow my example. If your legs are up the wall, you get to take your legs up and apart into a V, a flying V. You wanna do this freestyle in the middle of the room? Feel free to do it freestyle in the middle of the room. If you want a little bit more support or another variation, you can sit 
with your back up against the wall. You could sit with your back up against a bowl. You could sit with your back up against a chair. You can take your legs out wide. So you're going for a flat back, straight legs, and a 90 degree bend at the torso, 90 degree bend at the hips here. If you're on the wall, legs are nice and wide. If they're falling too wide apart, you can put blocks between the thighs and the floor to catch your thighs so you don't overstretch your inner thighs. If you're sitting with your back up against the chair or the sofa or a friend, sitting up nice and tall. Shoulders back and down, you can press your fingertips into the ground and grow your torso nice and long. If you have a big old ball, you can also take that big old ball out in front. Your challenge is to keep a nice flat back as you push that big old ball out. Everybody's working with a flat back. Whatever you've chosen to play with here. Everybody's breathing. Everybody's taking deep belly breaths. And notice as you take those deep belly breaths, those deep belly breaths help pry your thighs apart a little bit more. Oh, you're fine, Bob. You can keep doing that. I was just blocking the camera <laughs> with the ball out in front. So you can keep pushing that ball out in front if you enjoy that. Yeah. And then from here, help your legs together. Oh. All right, we're going to take this into a twist. So lying down, bring your knees into your chest. You can kind of inchworm away from the chair inchworm away from the wall. Give yourself a little room to play with. You're lying down on the ground. You're gonna bring one knee at a time, both knees into your chest. Flex your feet flat, squeeze your thighs together. Open your arms out to the sides like airplane wings. Take a great big breath in. As you exhale, squeeze your thighs together, activate that pelvic floor, tuck in your front ribs. And keep your abs nice and strong as you drop both knees all the way over to the right, all the way down to the ground. Coming into a twist. If your left shoulder floats or if you're nervous about your left shoulder, bend that left elbow, put the left hand on your ribs. Everybody breathe into your ribs. And then as you <laughs> exhale, tuck those ribs in. Once again, deep rib cage breath. Exhale, tuck your ribs in, activate your belly, maybe fidget your shoulders so they lie a little flatter. We're here for three more breaths. And just hang out. Or you can work it with each and every exhalation. Engage those abs, rotate your torso a little bit more. And then from here, lift that top leg up first, the bottom leg up second. You're gonna recenter yourself out. So again, you're lying on your back, knees in close to your chest, feet flexed flat, legs squeezing together, arms open out to the sides out of the way. Begin with an inhale. Exhale, activate those core muscles and then drop both knees over to the left, all the way over down to the ground. Your right shoulder floats, or if you're nervous about that right shoulder, you can put your right hand on your ribs. Breathe into your ribs against your hand. And then when you exhale, tuck those ribs in to activate your abs and maybe fidget your shoulders so they lie a little flatter. I'm gonna leave you here for at least three more breaths, maybe longer if an airplane flies overhead. So keep on breathing, keep adjusting, keep fidgeting, keep twisting. Take one more breath here. And at the end of your next exhale, keep rolling all the way over onto your left side. Keep turning all the way over to hands and knees. It's starting to cool off here. I'm gonna turn my fan off. So hopefully you won't have that background noise anymore. 
All right, cat and cow, Rebecca's beat me to the punch there. So you can follow me or follow Rebecca. I'm gonna do a little cat and cow action. So patting underneath your knees, hands beneath your shoulders, and go for it. Inhale, head up, tail up. Exhale, belly in, tail in, chin in for your cat. And then keep on moving, cat and cow. Back and forth through your cat and cow pose. Now the next time you exhale into that cat pose, bring your big toes together, separate your knees wide, and back your hips up onto your heels for child's pose. Big toes together, knees apart, hips back on your heels. And you could even press into your hands to staple your hips to your heels a little bit more. Rounding your back, tucking your tail, tucking your chin. Now we just spent a good chunk of time bent in half, a good half hour or so with legs up the wall, legs up the chair, legs up on a ball. So now we need to open up the front of the hip flexors. We're gonna go into a lunge. Lots of variations of lunge out there in the world. One option I encourage you to take is to have padding underneath your knees. And you're gonna step forward with your right foot. Maybe I'll do my left, so hopefully you won't be a little too confused. You can have a big old ball, stack of blocks, chair, whatever you would like as support to help you stay upright. So if you're using blocks, you can have a block underneath each hand to help you stay upright. You can have a big old ball, wedge that big old ball in against your tummy so you can lean down into it, let that ball carry some of your weight. Actually, it feels really good. Or this can be done with a chair. If you're still facing the wall, you can even do this with your hands on a wall <laughs> to give yourself some upright support. So this could be done facing a wall. So chair, big old ball, blocks, whatever. Hang out in a lunge for a while. And then you're going to back up and switch sides. Let me angle slightly. So left foot forward, coming into that lunge. Again, you can have blocks underneath your hands. If that's all you have, just stay upright, stabilize with blocks. Stabilize with a chair. Hands on a wall. Or the one I like best is that big old yoga ball wedged in right in the front of that hip crease, letting it carry some of my weight as I get down on it. You choose your own adventure. Breathe. Spent 30 minutes bent in half. We're gonna spend a good minute undoing that. and then bail out. So padding underneath your knees. If you have a wall and that's all you have, you're gonna bring your hands together, put your elbows up against the wall. So I don't have a wall, so I really can't do it. But I can demonstrate it with a ball. I can also demonstrate it with a chair. Doing it with a ball, I'm putting my elbows on that wall or ball. Coming into this variation of a down dog, kind of a shoulder stretch thing. If you have a chair, elbows go on the chair. So we're doing this for an upper back stretch, a shoulder stretch. You can put your elbows on the couch, there she goes. You 
can even do this standing with your forearms against the wall, sliding into like a right angle box pose. Some of you might know what your box pose looks like. And then gather your belly up first and then everything else up as you back out of that one. Oh, 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 oh. All right. I don't see a whole lot of walls in the picture. I see a lot of chairs. So we're just gonna keep doing chair type stuff. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna come back into the lunge. Take that right foot forward again into the lunge. Hands can be on the chair seat or hands can be on the ball. We're gonna be twisting towards the front leg. So this happens to be my right leg. So I'm gonna get in there with my right hand and lift my belly up on top of that thigh. Left hand is on the chair. Right hand wraps around to the small of my back, right there, the tramp stamp, right there, the tag in the back of my pants. Turning, opening my chest, making it look good. Chest lifted, shoulders down. Getting down low in this lunge. So this left hand can be on a chair, can be on a ball, some sort of support. It can even be on a stack of blocks if that's what you have, a stack of blocks will work. And then back on out. And we're gonna switch sides, do a nice deep twist on the other side. So again, stepping forward, switching sides. For me, this is my left leg in front. Get in there with my left hand, lift my belly up on top of my thigh, turning towards the front leg. Left hand can wrap around the small of my back as I turn and twist and lunge. And unwind. All right, I might have to adjust the camera slightly. You're gonna stand on up. The moment you've all been waiting for, standing up. Oh, of course I had to touch it and mess it all up, didn't I? There we go. Chair, if you got it. Big ball, if you got it. Couch, if you have it. What have you, if you have it. Put a foot up on it. Probably won't work the best with a ball. <laughs> Probably better with a chair. But whatever leg you have in front, you're gonna take that belly up on top. For me, it's my right leg, so I'm gonna turn my belly to the right, put my belly up on top of that leg. Right hand comes around the small of my back. Doing the same twist I just did, but it's an upright version. In this upright version, you can play around with leaning forward, leaning back, leaning forward, leaning back. Again, we're doing a series of lunges to undo all that legs at the wall. Foot up on the coffee table, foot up on the kitchen table, foot up on a chair. And then lunging in and out. The same time twisting. Good. Now this arm that I have draped across, this happens to be my left arm. I'm gonna slide the pinky finger backside of my arm down to the outside of the knee maybe come into a prayer position. Turning to look over the top shoulder. And then bail out. Let's switch sides. So this is my left leg. I know the right and left is confusing when we're on Zoom. I apologize. This happens to be my left leg. Now lift my belly up, twist my belly towards the front leg, towards the bent leg. This is my left hand. I'm wrapping it around the small of my back. 
And I'm lunging in and out, rocking forward and back. I'm trying to stay upright as I do this. We're just playing with the variations on lunge here. Again, to undo all of that 90 degree angle legs of the wall stuff we were just doing. And then finally, you're going to slide whatever arm you have in front. For me, this is my right arm, this is my left leg. I'm going to slide it down diagonal to the outside of the knee. Maybe do a namaste with the hands and turn to look over the top shoulder. Maybe lunge forward a little bit more. And then ease on out. All right, we're gonna go back down to the ground. Legs up the wall, legs up a chair, legs up a ball. And we're gonna get into the shoulders a little bit more. So get yourself situated. Have your blocks and your belt nearby. We're gonna do a modified bridge slash shoulder stand thing. So initially, you don't want the pillow underneath your head, but eventually, as we wind down towards Shavasana, you will want that pillow. Looks like I'm still good with the camera angle, so this is where we are. Legs up a ball, legs up a chair, legs up the wall if you got a wall. So those lunges were to help open up the front of the hip creases, and we did a little bit of shoulder stretch. Now we're going to get into a lot more shoulder type of stretching. So legs up on the chair. I don't recommend a ball for this unless you've got really strong hamstrings because it would be one heck of a hamstring workout trying to do this on a ball. Legs up a wall or legs up the chair is what I recommend. Legs up the wall or legs up the chair or couch or coffee table or whatever you have. You're going to bring your knees in towards your chest and wiggle walk your hips in towards whatever support you have. If you're on a wall, you're trying to wedge your butt up against that wall. If you're on a chair, you're getting darn close to it. If you're using the chair again, you're gonna to wanna to reach down, find the feet of that chair so that it doesn't go anywhere. I'm holding onto the legs of the chair so it doesn't go anywhere. If you're doing the couch, it's probably not gonna get away from you. You're not gonna be able to push the couch across the room, most of us. So if you're doing a chair, you're gonna hold onto the front feet of the chair. If you're doing the wall, your legs are up the wall. The wall's not gonna go anywhere. You don't have to worry about that. Nothing underneath anybody's head. Okay, so if you got legs up the wall, you're gonna drag your feet down to put your feet flat. You want your feet higher than your knees. You wanna be able to see your toes, toenails. So you drag your feet down just enough to put your feet flat. If you're on a chair, you're gonna drag your feet towards the front edge of the seat. Maybe hook your heels or the arches of your feet around the edge of that chair seat. Make sure you're holding onto the chair feet and everybody's gonna peel their hips up off the ground. Start working those shoulders in narrow underneath your body. Try to rotate your arms like you're hitchhiking your thumbs out to the sides. If you're holding onto the chair, don't let go. Try to rotate your arms without letting go so that you're hitchhiking your thumbs out to the side so that you're getting your shoulders underneath your body. If you're doing legs up the wall, and you bent your knees, you push your feet into the wall, and you pelvic thrusted your hips towards the sky, you can probably bend your elbows and put your hands in the small of your back. You can even reach up and adjust your clothing if you need to. Lots of weight coming onto the tops of your shoulders. Again, notice I'm talking. That means you are breathing. If you cannot breathe, if you would not be able to talk in this position, bail out. Don't screw up your neck. Breathe. And then to come out of this, if you're on a chair, you're gonna walk your feet away from your hips. Keep holding onto that chair until your hips come all the way down to the ground. If you're on a chair, you can let go of the feet of the chair once your hips have hit the deck. If you're on the wall, you just lie down on the floor and put your legs back up the wall. 
and breathe and pause and troubleshoot. Now, if that gave you a headache, you might have been holding your breath. You might have been clenching your jaw. You might have been tensing up. And then as soon as you relaxed, you got a head rush and you got a headache. That's no fun. Don't do that. If you went up there and your knees didn't like it, your heels were probably too close to your butt. So probably if your knees weren't happy, you drag your feet down too close to the, uh, your hips uh, if you had your feet flat on the wall. So if your knees didn't like it, make sure your toes stick out past your knees. If your back didn't like it, make sure you are doing the work with your thighs, not your butt. It's not a bent, a butt clunch. It's a thigh workout. Your thighs should be fatigued. Your thighs should be tired. Your thighs should be cramping rather than your back. A leg cramp is better than a back cramp any day. So I'm just stalling. I'm just talking, letting you get equilibrium. And then you have the option of repeating this two more times. I recommend taking a pause in between each time. The second time's better. The third time's better. The fourth time is even better yet. But if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. You can just leave your legs up the wall. You can just leave your legs on the chair. You can leave your legs up on the couch cushion, on the ball, whatever. Coming into this modified bridge pose, shoulder stand is an optional thing. With that said, I'm going to hold on to the feet of the chair. I'm going to drag my heels in towards my hips, bottoms up, and work those shoulders in narrow. If you're doing legs up the wall, you drag your feet down just enough to put your feet flat, and you pelvic thrust like a champ to get your hips up over your shoulders. Now, some of you have been with me for a really, really long time, and if you're comfortable doing a shoulder stand, that's on you. I'm not gonna talk you into doing a freestanding shoulder stand unsupervised in your own home. You do that if that's your thing. But I am gonna encourage you to keep on breathing whatever you choose to do. How about one more breath here? And then you get to come on down and take a pause. Rest for at least three breaths. Settle down, breathe, get calm. You have the option for a third one of those. It's an option, it's not a requirement. So let's choose your own adventure. On this third one, I'm gonna watch. So you've seen me do it at least twice. On this third one, I'm gonna come watch you. So make sure you're holding onto that chair seat if you're using the chair. Make sure you're in close to the wall and you bend your knees just enough to put your feet flat. Everybody pelvic thrust, everybody hips lift up if you're gonna go there. And I'm gonna sneak a peek. And maybe comment on your form. Go, Christina, go. So Christine's got her legs up in the air. I'm gonna recommend you cross your ankles and squeeze your thighs together. So cross your ankles and that will help you activate your legs. Everybody can relax their butt cheeks. Good. If you've got your ankles crossed, try recrossing the other way. Your feeties are flointed. They're flexed at the toes and pointed like a ballerina wearing high heels or a Barbie foot, Barbie feet. Now the challenge is to keep your feet flointed, keep your, bar <laughs> your shirt tucked in. <laughs> Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> keep your feet pointed and then uncross your ankles, but keep that activation happening in your legs. Even with your legs uncrossed. Good. All right, Bob, you look good. Your legs are narrow as they should be. Everybody's legs are narrow close together. All right, to come out of this, abs are strong. Slowly come on down. <laughs> Are you reaching over to turn off the camera? Okay, <laughs> I can take a hit. <laughs> I'll stop looking at you now. <laughs> All right, just rest there with your legs up on whatever. Take a moment to shake your head no, wiggle your jaw, maybe even yawn. <laughs> Shrug those shoulders down underneath your body. And shake your head no, wiggle your jaw, maybe even yawn.
So finishing the way we began with legs up. Legs up the wall, legs up on a ball, legs up on a chair, legs up on the sofa, whatever works. And finishing the way we began, you might have that pillow for underneath your head or block or folded blanket. Be able to swallow comfortably. Again, swallowing, activating digestion, resting, restoration. Taking your attention back to your belly for some deep belly breaths, calming and soothing your nervous system. Now, depending on what you have your legs up, if your legs are up the wall and you have to kind of hold your legs narrow, you might consider belting your thighs together. Or if you have your legs up on a ball, you can belt your legs together. Just so that you don't have to hold any tension in the legs. So if you have your legs straight up the wall, I recommend tying the thighs together. So if your legs are about hip width apart, there might be some air space between your thighs. It's not a tourniquet. It's just a band to help keep your legs from drifting apart. So I don't know if you can see that on me, but I, I could put a fist between my legs. I could put a block between my legs. I have a little gap between my thighs, but the belt is keeping them from wandering any wider apart. And you can work yourself in narrow, really close to tight up against the wall or tight up against the ball, whatever you choose to use. If you have legs draped over the chair or over the sofa, they're probably not going to go anywhere. Deep belly breaths. And just settle in. Let your muscles fall from the bones. So at the very tops of your shoulders, right where your racer back sports bra touches you, or where the straps on your school backpack will rest on the tops of your shoulders, there are acupressure points, acupuncture points, that when stimulated, such as when we were in our shoulder stand or modified bridge pose position, right here at the very tops of the shoulders, those uh, upper trapezius muscle points, that are said to really help descend energy, drop energy down towards your feet, help drain excess pressure and energy from your head. So after a shoulder stand or a bridge pose or any other yoga pose that puts uh, pressure on those acupuncture, acupressure points, it's really calming and soothing for the body. Again, with legs up, fluid blood drains out of the legs passively into your torso, perfuses the heart. The heart's got plenty of blood to pump to the brain. It doesn't have to pump against gravity up to the brain. Heart slows down. Breathing slows down. Thoughts slow down. You also have the added bonus of the weight of your legs penetrating into your pelvis, pressing against the lower back. Lots of acupressure points on either side of the sacrum, that triangular shaped bone at the base of the spine, stimulating those acupressure points alongside the sacrum, helping to release the lower body and stimulate digestion, reproductive organs, the resting, rejuvenation, repair, relaxation response in the body. Again, just observe your breathing. Deep belly breaths. Deep rib cage breath. Deep heart breath. And 
And then a full body three part breath. Belly, ribs, heart, and exhaling, heart, ribs, belly. Again, a circular three part breath, inhaling up the front, belly, ribs, and heart, and exhaling down between the shoulder blades into the back ribs, into your back waist. Three part full body circular breath, slowing down, settling in.
Please begin to wiggle your fingers and toes. Stretch your arms. Wiggle your nose. Work up a good yawn. If you had tied your legs together, you might reach up and untie your legs. And you're going to slowly make your way over onto your right side. Moving slowly, letting your head hang heavily. Press yourself on up to sit. Sitting any way you like. And we'll finish with hands together at the heart. Namaste. And thank you for coming out. Off the top of my head and my brain's not working right now, but I think the next class on Wednesday night is the bondage yoga. I know I've got bondage, chair, and pillow pile. So I think the next one's probably bondage. But check your email, it's on there for sure. So next week, get ready to tie it up. And I'll see you then. If not, uh, on Wednesday, I'll see you Sunday. I've got nine o'clock yoga as well. Have a wonderful night, everybody. And I'll unmute you if you have any comments or questions. All good, everybody? Yeah, uh, Brandy. Uh-huh. The legs up the wall with the...